My name is Jaden Samiski. I'm 19 years old, and I started bladesmithing at about age 15. My entire life, I've gotten in trouble for two things, playing with knives and playing with fire. And so eventually, it clicked in my mind that I could make knives with fire, and it really just went from there. My name is Mash Weinberg. I'm 38 years old from Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm a senior engineer and a part-time bladesmith. I'm not normally a competitive guy, but for this, I made an exception because I'm here to win. My adrenaline's already pumping through my veins, and I'm ready for that challenge. How are you feeling, Matt? Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. <laughs> my name is Connor Logan. I'm 26, and I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I got into knife making because as a 15, 16-year-old kid, I had a fascination with knives, but I didn't have any money to buy them, so I decided to make them. And as it turns out, making knives is much more expensive than buying knives, but it's a lot more fun, too, so it's a win-win. My name's Jason Redman. I'm 51 years old. I'm from Augusta, Georgia. I'm a military veteran. I'm an ex-police officer and a part-time bladesmith. I want to win $10,000 to uh, donate it to a veterans organization so more people can be touched by what we do. That's why I do it. Well, gentlemen, welcome to The Forge. The four of you are about to take part in three very intense rounds of forging competition where we're going to test all of your skills. Now, at the end of each one of those rounds, you're going to present your work to our panel of expert judges who will then critique your work and make an elimination. Judges for today's competition are ABS Master Smith Jay Nielsen, Historic Weapons Recreation Specialist Dave Baker, and Edge Weapons Specialist and Kali Martial Artist Doug Markaida. They'll be deciding who's going to be going home empty handed and who's going to be leaving here with the title of Forge of Fire Champion along with a check for $10,000. So let's get into it. On your anvils, you guys have a cloth. Go ahead and remove that for me. Yes. What well, you guys have in front of you are bars of 1095 and 15 and 20 steel, which we want you to use to make Damascus billets and forge them into blades. But today, we don't want you to build signature blades in your signature style. No, gentlemen, we got something much more complex, much more intricate, a blade that was designed specifically for this competition by Dave Baker himself. Today, I want you to build this. Gentlemen, this is no mistake. The blade you guys are gonna be building is laying behind this display. Today's competition, we're gonna be testing your visualization skills in a competition we're calling the Memory Game. Guys, I'm gonna call you up one at a time and you're each gonna have 20 seconds and only 20 seconds to check out the blade behind this display and commit it to memory. Because after that 20 seconds is completed, you will not get to look at the blade again. Now, you don't have to be exact, but keep in mind, if the smith next to you is closer, you might just be going home. You guys ready? Jade, you're up first. Come on up, bud. I got a terrible memory, man. Go fish is hard. Yeah. My mind starts coming up with ways to remember this, and immediately my mind goes to my arm. I can use, you know, hand, elbow to forefinger, that type of thing. That way I don't have to remember any numbers and have kind of a reference that is attached to me. Matt, you're up. Come on. I do have a strong memory, so I feel like that is going to be an advantage. 20 seconds starts now. It has a trailing tip on it with a serrated back. It's going to be a lot to remember. Jason, your turn. Come check it out. <laughs> Time starts now. <laughs> I just take two basic measurements, and then I try to step back and visualize it in my mind. Start focusing on one detail of the blade, and it feels like I lose another detail. Three, two, one. Time's up. Last but not least, Connor, your turn, bud. Generally, I think my memory's pretty good, but uh, 20 seconds is not a lot of time. Okay. It's A, huge, B, unnecessarily complicated. Three, two, one. Time's up. And C, that's pretty cool, all right? I'll give you that one. It's a pretty cool knife. Now, gentlemen, after round one's complete, we'll get into round two, where you guys are going to add handles to your blades, turn them into fully functioning weapons. We're going to check for strength and durability in a copper pipe chop. And then we're going to check your edge retention in a water tube slice. 
Now, gentlemen, you guys have three hours on the clock. Good luck. Your time starts now. Aside from the profile, you get a choil, you got a finger weld, you got a bird's beak, right? Then you get into the real details, which are the shape of the grind, the guard will be under the handle, how deep the serrations are. Which, with 20 second look, it's very hard to see. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Wide preform. I need to write everything that's in my mind, put it down so I don't have to think about it anymore. One of the oldest forms of measurement is using from your elbow to your finger. I'm going to get it ready for forge welding. Really kind of intimidating as a 19-year-old seeing all these, you know, battle-hardened judges ready to judge my work. I think that Dave Baker's probably got shirts that are older than I am. <laughs> so we have to make Damascus blade. But Dave's blade, it's not Damascus. It's not cool, Dave. I'm talking to you. It's not cool. No, that's good. Honestly, when I designed this, I just piled on as much as I could. You're evil. <laughs> this is evil. Oh, yeah. I feel 70% confident. That's a C. You know, I'll take it. It's easy to get degrees. OK. Got to grind. The first thing I got to do is get the steel clean. Muscle memory kicks in, and I'm feeling great at this point. So I get it stacked properly straight into the forge. I like to challenge myself. All of the hobbies I've ever had are hard. Challenge parts, what gets me up in the morning. Come on. Jason's steel's looking good. Oh, yeah. Cool comic collected. We have to do multi-layer Damascus. Never done that before. So I can't make any mistakes. I try and get all my loose pieces together and even on all sides. And I toss it in the forge. So far, so good. But it's very important that I set these welds properly. If I squish too much too soon, it will cause the billet to blow apart, and I don't have time to start over. Matt was being a little more aggressive than I like to see on a first press. You can definitely shear some welds when you're too aggressive. I don't hear any dead space, so I'm feeling very confident that my forge welding was a success, and now it's time to start drawing it out and shaping the blade. Gentlemen, you got two hours and 30 minutes left on the clock. It's not up step yet. I've had a full beard since eighth grade. That's a big fire risk. $10,000 can buy you a lot. It cannot buy you this. Not for sale. Hot. My belt's finally up to heat. I'm ready to go. Mm. I got to set my welds, otherwise the billet's no good. If you don't get a good Damascus weld, you don't have a good billet, you got nothing to turn in. You got to give me one of these. It looks like it's welding pretty well. And back in the fire with you. At this point, my welds are set, my billet's starting to draw out, and I'm cruising, man. It'd be good to set myself apart from the competition, so I'm going to put in a ladder pattern. Hell yeah. You put a ladder pattern in. That's awesome. What? Why are you shaking your head? Too early. Oh, He's going right. to forge almost all of that ladder pattern out. Perfect. Progress. My billet's looking great. And out of the corner of my eye, I see Brother Smith setting up to do some Damascus pattern. So I'm thinking I need to do the same. Now we've got two Smiths doing it. <laughs> Smithy seat, Smithy do. Finished putting in my notches. Now I can just move on to the next part of making this blade. I see Jaden and Matt. They're doing ladder pattern. Mm. I'm going to try to outdo them, so I'm going to do a twist pattern. Mm. And here we go. Jake's oh, is doing no. it, too. Holy. Smoke. This is right. fantastic. Get two twists on it. The twist is putting tons of risk in it, because all those twists need to now be forge welded together, or you're going to have lines and cold shuts running throughout the blade. The difficulty with this twist is to maintain the width on Dave Baker's blade, because it's wide. At this point, I'm thinking keeping it simple maybe would have been better. Mm. Gentlemen, 90 minutes on the clock. That press is nice. I see the guys going after a ladder pattern. There's no pattern requirement. They just said Damascus. That's all I'm going to give them. I'm not making work for myself. I spent a lot of time drawing the billet out. Oh, my metal. And it's still too thick. So I'm just going to ditch some of this. I'm grinding on it. I'm trying to get that stupid thing to come off. We have a thing called a chop saw. 
There's no point in this competition you not hearing that little clock go boop, boop. I can feel it, it's counting right there. That's gonna be fun. Finally, it pops free. So I gotta get it in the forge as soon as I can. That's ugly. Nice. I've got the billet prepped. I'm gonna forge my entire profile, and then I'm gonna clean it up on the grinder. And the blade that we're supposed to be modeling, it's got this real gnarly saw back. And I'm not gonna add that because I'm confident it's something I can do post heat treat if I do make it to the second round. Everybody's kind of on the right track. Yep. It's gonna come down to details. As I'm making my blade, I know that I'm missing something around the Ricasso area. I think I'm just going to roll with it and hope that it will not send me home. I like school. Good. I'm happy with the rough shape that I have. I'm ready to move over to the grinder. As I'm on the grinder, I notice that there's a D-lamb on the side of the blade. Oh, no. We might have seen a sign of Matt being aggressive with the billet. I don't have time for this to be happening. If I don't get that D-lamb out of there for the quench, that's going to be a place for a crack to occur. I'm terrified. Matt's in panic mode right now. The only way to fix it is to weld it up. If that weld doesn't solve that problem, that could snap the blade. Oh, yeah. Welded it up, and it's good to go. Time is of the essence right now. I can feel the adrenaline pumping through my veins, and I'm like, we're going to get this done. I like it. I've got the width worked out. Now I've got to just start getting the shape of the blade, because somebody sped up the time, because I don't know where it went. I'm dropping the point of the blade, trying to hit it up towards the tip. The steel's just not moving like I want it to at this point. Oh, no, Jason still looks a bit lean. There doesn't look like there's enough meat to grind in the aspects we're asking for. All right, guys, you are down to 30 minutes. That'll do. I feel good about the profile. It's still a little heavy, but if I make it to the second round, there's going to be room to take care of that. I'm ready to quench. Hot. Jaden went into the oil, but he was pretty hot. Yeah. Get a quick glimpse at the blade, and it's dead straight. I am stoked. Perfect. Oh, yeah. So I've got this thing mostly to shape. I think it looks like the Dave Baker special. Maybe. Kind of. Cutter has still got a bit of a drop point. It doesn't really have a curvature to the spine. It's more like a peak. I heat it up to quench the temp, and I'll throw it in. All right, Connor's quenched. That's nice. Seems pretty straight. I'm good to go. And then I realize, oh, man, it's got these weird scallopy serrations. And I got to put those in. I hate serrations on the back of a blade. Then why'd you put them on here? Because you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> that's ugly. If I forget any of these features and the guys around me remember it, that's a plane ticket home. Generally, I think my memory's pretty good. But I'm just going to have to roll with it. There we go. Blade Smith, we're down to 15 minutes. Awesome. Matt's quenched. It's looking straight. I'm starting to get happier now. And that's when I realized I forgot the serration. Oh. I don't want to get sent home over not having the feature in the knife. So now we're in mad dash mode. I'm putting these serrations in the best I can. Man. There's minutes left on the clock. I've got to get this blade quenched. All right, Jason is quenched. Whoa! So that was hot. That was way hot. We're good. At this point, I'm feeling great. Ooh. Jason's blade. It's long, thin banana. Now I'm realizing this doesn't look as wide as it should be. The point doesn't look like it's dropped enough. But I've got no time. This is what we got. Come on, come on. Five, four, three, two, one. Gentlemen, turn off your machines. Put down your tools. This round is over. Looking at the competitor's blades, I've completely forgotten to do the choil. All of them have some sort of serration on the back, except for me. I'm hoping that is not counted against me. Color me impressed, gentlemen. 
There have been times where we've had a blade out that the Smiths had to recreate, that they could see the entire round, and they didn't come out with anything near as good as you guys did. So you should all be proud of yourselves. And it's time for the critique. So, Jaden, you're up first. Ready? Yes. All right, please present your weapon. All right, Jaden, steel looks clean, tight. I don't see any seams. Everything's straight. And looking down at Dave's example, you notice you get a few things that are missing on this piece. The serrations, you're missing a couple things in the choil area. So thinning these out some, adding those on the grinder, I think you're well on your way. Thank you. Matt, you're up. You ready? Absolutely. Please present your work. All right, Matt, so right off, you actually added a lot of the elements that we were looking for. But, dude, that's a whole lot of handle. You've got a good general shape to work from. There's a lot of work to go forward on this blade. Good job. Thank you. All right, Connor, you're up next. Please present your work. All right, Connor, compared to the sample we have, it's got the curve going, but it drops to a point as opposed to trail off to a trailing point. I see a lot of the pieces we're looking for in here, but they're not refined. A little refinement, you should be on your way. All right, Jason, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's see what you came up with. All right, Jason, you got a good start here. There's definitely a few issues. It's pretty good warp on here, and it doesn't just warp here. It actually warps down at the back end, too. The biggest problem is there's not a ton of steel here to modify it easily to match this. But overall, good job. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, only three of you are moving forward into round two. The judges have made the decision, and the bladesmith leaving the forge is... Jason, unfortunately, your blade just didn't make the cut, and Dave's going to tell you why. Jason, trying to replicate that blade is a monumental task. And basically, it came down to the fact that your blade, of all four blades, is the furthest from the example. That combined with the warp, that's why we're letting you go. Totally understand. Well, Jason, I'm going to have to ask you to please surrender your work and leave the forge. Thank you. In my mind, it was close. But now that I see the two together, it's not as close as I thought. You did good work, Jason. It's definitely a humbling experience. It's a lot harder than I thought. But that's part of the fun of it. That's why I do it, because it's hard. Well, gentlemen, you've got three blades here that got you into the second round of competition, so congratulations. Now, we want you to fix any issues you have with your blades, as well as add any of the features that you missed from Dave's blade. Now, we're going to keep that mounted up here for this entire round, so you're welcome for that. Now, keeping up with the memory theme, on the other side of this display, there are four pictures. Two of them are mosaic pins, and two of them are colors. I want you to match those mosaic pins and incorporate both of those colors into your handle material. I'm going to spin it around for 30 seconds. In that time, you've got to memorize those pictures and use them in your handle construction. Your time starts now. My one weakness, memory. It feels like some little evil genius engineered this perfectly for me to not work out well. Three, two, one. All right, gentlemen, time is up. Y'all got it? That's a lot. Now, after these two hours are complete, you'll turn your blades over to the judges, and we're going to test for strength and durability in a copper pipe chop. And then we're going to check for edge retention in a water tube slice. You've got two hours on the clock. Your time starts now. I got to tell you, this entire challenge is just cruel. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> never made mosaic pins before. This is the main thing I'm worried about. So what is so difficult about doing the mosaic pin? The biggest thing is make sure you get all the air either out or through the pin. You don't want to drill through it and then have a bubble. I got the mosaic materials cut to size. Now I'm just going to fill these big brass tubes with epoxy, jam everything in there, and hope it goes well. Yeah. I've made mosaic pins a time or two before. That's real fiddly work under a time crunch. This one's going to have to do. Normally, it takes me probably 45 minutes. I don't have that kind of time. So to get it done, I just decide if I make a mess, I don't have to clean it up. Come on now. Connor is spending a lot of time on those mosaic pins. It seems like the trap of the mosaic pins is going down the rabbit hole of making them perfect. Hey, good puppy. Now it's time to address the blade. OK. Perfect. So once I have my mosaic pin constructed, I go ahead and cut the handle to be a more manageable size, followed by running a beetle weld on both sides of the handle. 
What does he need to weld on? So he needs to weld something on to create that bird beak. The bird beak's coming out. Now that I'm over this hump, stress is starting to come down a little bit, but so is the time on the clock. So far, so good. Gentlemen, 30 minutes have elapsed out of round two. Mm. I missed a couple of features in round one, so I need to put that in. The saw back on the spine of the blade, and also this big choil. The heart rate's a little bit higher, just a lot to do and not very much time to do it. I'm starting to feel the stress a little bit again, but I'm making sure to take my deep breaths because smooth, wait, what is the saying? Smooth is, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. That's what it was. All right. A little bit of oil there. I got to get some holes for these pins. me. I tried to leave the handle soft. Apparently, that didn't work out because it is just harder than a cold coffin nail. Spent a lot of time doing this. Connor's having a little bit of trouble there. Ah. I'm getting frustrated with these holes, but I can't move on until I get the holes drilled. Nope. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Panic's trying to set in. Clock is looming over your shoulder. I don't have time to be messing around with this. Me. I'm just going to use another means to make that hole. At least I know it's hard, I guess. And I see a Dremel tool and some carbide bits. Awesome. You can take the carbide burr and use that to drill your hole, even if it's hard in material. You can do it, little buddy. It just melts away that steel. I wish I had done it way sooner. That's what I want. Well, Matt, to get the colors right, he grabbed a red and a blue liner. So he's checking the boxes. I'm at the drill press, and I realize that my mosaic pin is too short. I don't have enough time to make another one and do all the other things that I got to do. And I'm going to abandon the mosaic pin and just work on profiling the handle shape so that it's more comfortable in the judge's hands. It's not a parameter failure, but if it comes down to it where everybody tests equally, those mosaic pins and the colors are really going to matter. Bladesmiths, you guys are down to one hour. It's mean looking. My blade's cooling. I'm going to start finding handle material. Yeah. I know these scales need to be orange and blue because those are the two colors I saw. The color's not a fire engine red. It's more like a flame red, which has a lot of orange in it. It'll suffice. I think so. I realized that one of these things is not going to be enough to cover my entire tank, so I'm going to have to cut the other one on an angle and kind of make an L shape. OK. Now that I got the scales all cleaned up and ready to go, I'm going to glue this thing together and clamp it up. All right. I got a couple of minutes left to profile this handle and put on the cutting edge. Yeah. Now that I have my handle squished together with C-clamps, I can start profiling my edge. I'm trying to make my edge geometry as good as I can so that it'll pass the water tube test, but not so fine that it's going to break during the copper pipe chop. 15 minutes on the clock. I got my handles cut to size. Now I just need to epoxy it all up, get it fit together. Oh, come on. And it just won't go. Oh, the wood just popped off the liner. God bless America and all she stands for. That's what my mom used to say when she was trying to curse. I got to keep going, though. Splash some super glue on there. It bonds instantly. Connor's getting an edge on now. He's cutting it extremely close today. All that time that Connor spent on trying to set up those spins, really is coming back to bite him right now. Yep. Five minutes on the clock! I don't have a handle shape. I also don't have an edge on the blade. I don't have enough time to do both well. So I'm going to do both half well. It pains me, but it's what I got to do. Five, four, three, two, one. Turn off your machines. This round is over. I am not feeling great. Blade isn't finished, the handle isn't done, but I don't know where the other guys are at. I could be not the worst on the block. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. Copper pipe chop. Looks simple, but this copper pipe loves tearing up edges. So I'm gonna give them a few wax and test the edges, overall construction of your knives. You know, what they do to the pipes, it's cool to see, but the big thing is what the pipes do to your blades. Jaden, you're first, you ready to go? Take it easy, but take it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Copper is really soft and kind of likes to stick on the steel. It could really easily roll it or do all sorts of things to it. My heart is racing at this point, because I don't know what's going to happen.
was gnarly. All right, Jaden, you got all we asked for, so your memory must be pretty good. A couple little chips and rolls. But otherwise, handle's comfortable. Great job. Thank you. I'm glad I went first. That was horrifying. <laughs> Matt, you ready for this? I'm terrified. That's all right. We'll do it anyway. I've seen past competitions where the copper pipe chop does a lot of damage to blades, and I'm worried that my blade might be next. I can't count how fast my heart's beating. All right, Matt, you survived. Good job. Blade's still straight. You still have an edge there. But uh, what happened to the mosaic pins there? They're not there. It's one of the things we asked for. The mosaic pin that I made made it too short. I had to abandon it to make a functional weapon. OK. It's not a parameter failure, but that's a bit of an issue. The handle's fine. It's actually comfortable back here. Up here, it's a bit on the thick side. But your blade's still straight, still sharp. Hand is still on. Good job. Thank you. Connor, how are you feeling? Less good than I was before I saw you wailing away, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, be OK. <laughs> Going into testing, my biggest concern is that it's going to tear his hand up, because it's not a finished handle. So I'm a little nervous about him swinging that at the copper pipe. Let me talk to these guys for a second. Feel that. Right there. You got a little shiv right there. Connor, I got a big issue with this. I know you're rushed at the end, but this handle is extremely sharp, right where my finger is. And then the end of the blade right here is almost like a little shiv digging into my finger. Leather, tougher than my skin. The marks is digging into the leather. I would not feel comfortable unless I was around a glove swinging this, and that's totally unfair to your competitors. I understand completely. Well, Connor, man, we hate to see somebody go this way. Jay, unfortunately, can't fairly test your weapon. I want to say thanks for coming out. You fought really hard. You did great in round one, but unfortunately, your time here in the forge has ended. I understand. Thank you. Damn good fight, man. In a way, I'm relieved that they gave it a vote of confidence. I do not want Jay to swing that and hurt himself. I wouldn't put it in my hands, and my hands are pretty calloused. So it's unfair for me to expect anybody else to do that. All in all, it's not too bad. I accomplished my two goals. Don't get out on round one. Don't light my face on fire. Check and check. I feel pretty good about it. Gentlemen, congratulations. It's down to the two of you to decide who's going to leave here with the title of Forge and Fire champion and that check for $10,000. Now, in this final round, we're sending you back to your home forges for four days to build an iconic weapon from history. We want you to build this. Oh. This is the Elephant Tusk Sword. Dating as far back as the 6th century BC, the mighty elephant was used during warfare often armed with the fierce elephant tusk sword. This lethal weapon featured a socket that connected directly to the elephant's tusk. The double-edged blade was designed to inflict massive destruction as an elephant charged through barricades and ranks of enemy soldiers. Throughout history, there is evidence of thousands of elephant tusk swords being used in battle. However, only four pairs of these intimidating weapons still exist today. There's a lot of parameters here, so I hope you've got a mind like an elephant. Your swords must have a flambear's blade and feature at least two peaks. You need to have two fullers on both sides, and that blade needs to measure between 16 and 17 inches from tip to the center of the base. And the whole system needs to mount securely with a mechanical fixture to the metal tusk we supply. I've never seen anything like it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm even going to construct this. The terrifying feeling is starting to set in again. Good luck. We'll see you in four days. Hell yeah. Back here in Knoxville at my home forge, we're going to build the elephant tusk sword. All right, here we go. For today, my goals are to get most of the forging done, if not all of it. 
The first thing I'm doing is using this chunk of 5160. I'm going to try and draw that out to the required width. Got a little ways to go. I've got my width that I'm looking for, but my workpiece might be a little too thin. And I'm going to try and forge weld in a mild steel medial ridge. So I'm going to get some mild steel and try and forge weld that onto both sides. A little ways to go. So I see a little bit of surface cracking here. I'm going to make sure I don't have to start over. It's got to go. I know for sure that I have a bad forge weld. Well, that sucks. At this point, I'm really frustrated. I really don't have time for this. I've decided to just run beads of weld that I can grind away later. I hope this doesn't affect the integrity of my blade. All right, we're back in Boulder, Colorado, here at my home forge, and we're going to start working on the elephant tusk sword. So I've decided to do Damascus for this blade, hopefully to set myself apart from the competition just that extra little bit. Oh, yeah. So the first heat of any forge welding process is always the most important. This is where I need to make sure I get all of my welds set up, and I make sure that I avoid any sort of delam or inclusion. Everything's looking good. I think that it's all welded up well. I think I'm going to finish forging the blade right as the day ends, which is exactly where I want to be. Day two, I'm a little bit behind schedule of where I wanted to be, but I got a quench by the end of the day today. All right, now we're cooking. This sword is meant for an elephant, so the amount of force that's going to go into the blade is going to be off the charts. We want as even of a heat as we can get. Check it with a magnet, make sure that we're at critical temp, and then pull it out. Drop it in my quench oil. Good so far. Don't see any cracks. All the welds held up. Nothing blew apart. So far, so good. Now just to make it look pretty. Today, I got a lot to do. I'm going to start preparing to weld the socket cap onto the blade. I'm going to start prepping the blade to weld these on just like that and run a bead of weld all the way through here. So welding high carbon steel to mild steel is a pretty risky and tricky operation. If I do these welds incorrectly, I will end up with cracks. I could end up with the whole blade basically just breaking off. If these welds don't go well, the blade's done and I'm just gonna have to restart. And I really don't want that to happen. The welds ended up great, so I'm feeling good about where I am. Day four, gonna be a lot of coffee today. <laughs> Yesterday, I finished shaping the blade, so today I'm gonna start off by securing the blade to the socket. I'm worried about possibly overheating the blade, so I'm gonna have to take some extra care to make sure the heat doesn't travel and ruin the temper on the blade. Cool off. Doing a kind of test fit of the sword. Perfect. Everything goes together as smooth as silk. This blade is crazy. Um, I never would have imagined myself making something like this, so I'm kind of excited to see what kind of destruction it does, or maybe the sword blows apart. I don't know. Looks pretty sweet. Yesterday, when I got the blade heat treated and quenched. It's hard, and today's mostly just going to be making this thing beautiful and put an edge on it. That's really it. Making a sword that's not designed to be swung by a person, but is meant to be behind an elephant, it's a bit of a challenge. So I'm going to grind it like I would an axe. I'm going to do big convex edges, because all that extra meat in there will help support the cutting edge itself. That's exactly how I wanted it. It's way cooler than I ever thought it would have been, and I'm happy with it. At this point, I could show up, and on the first hit, it could snap in half, and I'd walk away happy. I hope it doesn't, though. I do want to win. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, welcome back to the forge, guys. You had four days to work on your elephant tusk swords, and they look great. We're about to have a lot of fun with them. But before we get into that, I want to hear about these builds. So, Jaden, how'd your build go for you? Went great. Made it out of 1084 and 15 and 20 Damascus. Did a fluted socket and a couple of ferrules on there. Fantastic, Matt. How about you? Blade went well. The blade itself is made out of 5160, and it's got a mild steel socket that attaches it to an elephant tusk. All right, gentlemen, one of you is going to be leaving here with a check for $10,000 and the title of Forge and Fire Champion. But the only way for us to find out which one of you is coming out on top is to put him through a few tests. And up first, 
The Kill. Doug? Bladesmiths, welcome to the Kill Test. In battle, these swords were attached to elephants who just rammed across its opponents. Find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do. We're gonna go hog wild on this ballistics dummy. Jaden, you're up first. You ready for this? Hell yeah. Let's do this. That thing's gonna be putting a lot of force behind the blade. The biggest thing I'm worried about right now is the blade snapping. Ooh. Ah. I wasn't expecting his head to come off. <laughs> All right, James, let's talk about your weapon here. Every thrust was deadly. It went all the way through. What I do like is I can see the Damascus pattern on your blade there. Jaden, your elephant tusk sword, it will kill. That's all I wanted. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? Hopefully my sword's not irrelevant after this test. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have fun. I don't think there's been a test yet that's going to have this much force behind it. When it comes to a dead stop, it could snap just like that. All right, Matt, it penetrates very deep, and on the way out, it cuts. It's a weighted weapon right here that when it thrusts, see the hole right in the middle of the ballistics dummy, it destroyed everything in there. Your weapon right here, it will kill. Thank you, Doug. All right, gentlemen, the strength test. We've mounted your elephant tusk swords on our battering ram here, and I will be attacking that armored soldier. All right, Jaden, you ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. The tip is the weakest point in my blade, and it's also where all of the force is going to be delivered. So my heart is pounding, my ears are rushing. I'm just hoping that it holds up. That's terrifying. Jaden, I really have to commend you on the artistry of this blade. The low layer pattern really pops. The connections here are all really beautifully done. And for this test, that tip still has an edge. Everything is right and tight and true, and nothing's changed. Well done. Thank you. Matt, you ready to roll? Absolutely. OK. So Matt, your blade held up fine. The tip, it's a little bit duller than when it started out with, but I wouldn't run my finger down this edge. So nicely done, it held up beautifully. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, we know your weapons can kill and we know they are strong. Now it's time to find out how sharp your weapons are. This is the sharpness test, the guillotine fruit slice. We're gonna take your elephant tusk sword, release it and try to cut through the fruit. I want to see clean cuts all the way through. Jaden, you're up first. You ready? Hell yeah. All right, let's do this. Nice. All right, Jaden, your edge here, cut all the way through cleanly. Bottom line, sir, your elephant tusk sword, you will cut. All right, Matt, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. All right, now let's talk about your weapon here. The weight on this, it drives the cut all the way through. Your edge is sharp. More importantly, sir, it will cut. Thank you, Doug. Well, Jaden, Matt, you guys both perform exceptionally well during your test. But as you know, only one of you guys will be leaving here with the title of Forge and Fire Champion. While the judges deliberate, I'm going to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. I'm a little unsure of what's going to happen. 
both Matt and I brought great work. They both performed really well. They held up really well. So at this point, it's anyone's guess. That seems like about neck and neck. What do you think about the blades? Well, I mean, these are one of the most out of the box weapons we've had to Smith to make. And I think they both knocked it out of the park. They pretty much performed equally. So it's all about the craftsmanship. One of them, craft-wise, is just on a different level. OK, so it sounds like you guys are all in agreement on who's going home with the win. All right, we'll call him back in. Well, gentlemen, this is the kind of test that we like to see. We've got two Smiths who performed almost equally. But as you guys know, only one of you is going to be leaving here with a check for $10,000 and the title of Forge and Fire champion. The judges have made the decision. And today's Forge and Fire champion is Jaden, congratulations. You won, man. Matt, unfortunately, that means you did not come out on top today. And Dave's going to tell you why. Well, Matt, first off, you made us a target-destroying piece of work there. But when two weapons test identically, it comes down to those finer details, fit and finish. And that's why we're letting you go. I understand. Well, Matt, I want to say you absolutely earned your spot here in the finals. But unfortunately, your time here in the Forge has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step out. I'm proud of the sword that I've turned in. They were virtually the same performance. Good job, man. Yeah, you too. And Jaden's weapon, he turned in a work of art, and I think he deserves the title. First thing I'm going to do when I get home, kiss my wife and crack open a beer. <laughs> well, Jaden, that means you are today's Forge and Fire champion. You're going to be leaving here with a check for $10,000, man. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm the new Forge and Fire champion, and I'm really stoked about it. How old are you again? 19. 19 years old. That is extremely impressive, man. Thank you. What? I'm so bad at emotion. <laughs>